What is this heavy metal cylindrical object found in a box of World War I stuff? It has a loose cone on top and a smaller cylinder protruding from the bottom with small holes drilled into it. It's likely from the 40s, and there are no identifying marks that I can find. The cylinder protruding from the bottom looks kinda like a muzzle brake. I work for a museum that only professionalized in the last few years. Thus my position was created. I've been attempting to find and deal with any hazardous objects in our collection. Grenades and ammunition are easy to ID. But I had no idea what this thing was. Unfortunately, record keeping was not always meticulous in the past. So I have no idea of the history or safety of these objects. Any ideas? It's a World War One era British made 3 inch Stokes mortar round. This projectile weighed 11 pounds and had a maximum range of about 1,000 yards when fired from a mortar. The British used it in 1915. It was transportable and could keep up with advancing troops. However, the military mindset was to hold ground and capture ground, so the Stokes was not produced in great quantities in favor of larger caliber devices. When the US entered the war in 1917, they did not want to get bogged down in static warfare, but wanted open ground warfare. So they adopted the British Stokes mortar and called it the three-inch trench mortar. The US purchased 914 of the British-made mortars and made 843 in the US that were used in France before the war ended. What is this thing that looks like a transmitter or something? And it came in a wooden box. There are some kind of metal modules to put in the holes. In the back is some kind of wire spooled up. It also has some old German newspaper clippings in the box. Any ideas? It's the main component of what was once called a cat's whisker radio, also known as foxhole radio, which is a basic crystal radio. The hunk of silvery stuff could be galena, which would be fixed in place by one of the clamp assemblies and tickled with a piece of whisker-like wire until it formed a basic diode, at which point perhaps another assembly would hold the whisker wire in place. The diode forms the basic component to rectify radio waves into sound waves, allowing someone to listen to nearby AM radio stations using just the energy coming down a notional antenna wire. What is this round springy material? It will move slightly and open up, then goes back to its original form, about 2 inches in diameter on the round portion. It also has a shimmy finish. It was found with old handmade baby clothes. Any ideas? It's a celluloid baby blanket clip from the 1930s. It was intended to hold the blanket around your baby when in their baby carriage and out for a walk so that they didn't get cold. What is this small cast iron pot with a hanging hook? I found it by the fireplace when I moved into my 118-year-old house. It has a small hook at the top to maybe hang from something. The lid swings to either side to open. Any ideas? It's a Betty lamp. It is thought to be of German, Austrian or Hungarian origin. It came into use in the 18th century. They were commonly made of iron or brass and were most often used in the Homer workshop. These lamps burn fish oil or fat trimmings and had wicks of twisted cloth. What are these red and white markers found on county roads in Kentucky? This is seen by driveways on county roads. Sometimes letters and numbers. I can see no correlation between this number and the street address. It's an emergency address. It is to assist in 911 calls if they need to send help, so emergency teams like ambulances and fire can find your address easier. It also tells them which entrance to use if there are several entrances for one address. This is super important when seconds matter. Signs like this can be a lifesaver. What is this mysterious primitive wooden claw-like object? I have no idea what the origin or age of the item is. It is made of wood, petrified leather, a few very old and rusty nails, and a scrap of wire. The slope of the hook is at an angle that is not conducive to hanging a garment on it. It would slide right off. My fingers fit in the holes. No maker marks or writing of any kind. It is definitely handmade, one of a kind. The estate sale I purchased this from was in northern New Mexico. They had a large collection of Native American items, with a few African items as well. So, I believe it is either an American primitive or African of some kind. Any leads would be much appreciated. 
This traditional tool is known as a palomarka. It is believed to be Bulgarian in origin and was used during the grain harvest. On one hand, the worker held the sickle. The palomarka was worn on the other hand to protect it against blade injuries. It also helped the worker grasp a larger bundle of the crop being cut by using the hook to essentially catch the grain for reaping. What is this full brass with knobs on either end and cestral stamped in the middle? The knobs don't twist, and the rollers just inside the knobs are connected by a cylinder that spins through the middle. Any ideas? It's a 19th century rolling parallel rule. It is used to plot parallel lines, especially on paper marine charts, with simple direct transfer. The roller keeps the plotter parallel as you slide it across the chart. What is this 5 inches long hollow metal with a wooden handle and dash marks? It has a patent date that looks to be October 26, 1900. I tried searching using the date thought it might be an old kitchen utensil of some sort. Tried reverse Google searching and found nothing. Any ideas are appreciated. It's an early 20th century adjustable punch for embroidery, just missing the pointed end. What is this rusted slightly convex metal plaque marked prairie, with some illegible numbers under it? It's a pretty heavy metal plaque found in the woods circa 2006, in an area that has always been a farming area in northwest Indiana, but also near Chicago and near steel mills. It is about 7 inches square. I tried searching for prairie brand farm machinery, prairie antique stove, and such, but couldn't find a similar plaque. What is this thing? It's the lid for a prairie number no. three seater from the early 20th century circa 1915. It's probably from a smaller walk behind type seater. Before the tractors and other farming machinery came to our aid, we had companies producing manual tools that eased farming processes. One such tool is this antique push planter. What is this electrical unit located in my backyard? Attached to the house with wiring going through the roof. The house was built in 1957, and this looks to be original to the times. I cannot locate anything through Google search on what it may be. It looks to be two fusible links, and I am not sure if power is currently going to it. The unit has a cylindrical cap that covers the unit. Any ideas? These are porcelain telephone fuses, a lighting arister for protection against a lightning strike. It is liable to interference from lightning discharges, contact with power conductors, and induction from power lines. What would this antique silver locket have been used for? It looks like possibly ink residue on the two pads inside, but no indication that the inside door would have been sealed tightly enough to be a reservoir. It is a silver locket of some kind with a specialized interior to act as a portable device for some purpose. It has a short chain which may or may not be original, but it is about the size of my palm and heavy. Ornate carving on the exterior shell but really doesn't seem like anything that would have been worn around the neck possibly in a coat pocket more like a pocket watch. Found while clearing out an estate in Ontario, so likely regional. So, what do you think it is? Please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.